Yes, Fiers, my grandfather bought one of these brand new in Croydon in 1958. It was the very same car that my mother had as her first one. It was a turquoise car, which is uh, I think quite a common colour for me. This is Trafalgar Blue. Um, which is very appropriate considering I unfortunately lost um, Queen Elizabeth yesterday. But um, the turquoise seems to be very common as well. That's certainly a colour that uh, Steph and my driver Classics got one of those. Uh, one of my friends actually has a, a two door saloon, it's about the same age as this and that colour as well. There was a four door available, of course, as well. Um, and um, the uh, Minotaurer and the Traveller, they've lots of iconic versions of this wonderful old car designed by the uh, late great Alec Isigonis. It um, first went into production in 1948. The design um, was done sort of mainly I think in, in wartime and um, it's certainly something that is very much the 1940s. By this time this car was made in 1969, it was just a relic really, it wasn't particularly um, anything modern or contemporary. Originally these were going to have a flat four engine, but that was ditched at the last minute to save costs. The, um, oh, <laughs> got to be careful with this gearbox. Um, the MG Midget has a similar gearbox to this, by the way. Um, that didn't go very well for me either when I drove <laughs> one of those uh, last year. So yes, the side-valve engine in those Series MM Morris Miners developed about, I think it was something like 27 horsepower. When the first day Series Miners went into production, which was around 1952, they used the brand new A series engine that had been developed for the Austin A30. That was of 803 cc's in capacity and it developed 30 horsepower. In 1956, the um, Minor 1000 came out. Sometimes just known as a Morris 1000. One of the reasons why um, they didn't change the name of the car when it got. 1.1 engine in 1962 was because <laughs> the Morris 1100 went into production about the same time and that also used this engine. So it was confusing having the uh, two Morris 1100s. But yes, a real sort of bastion of charm and just nostalgia and um, definitely nostalgia with uh, this gearbox. <laughs> dear oh dear me. Turning circle of these is something like 33 metres and I've just demonstrated that I can turn it round. There we go, into first because I've come to a complete stop. No synchro match on first gear. There we go. No self cancelling indicators either, just nothing, none of that kind of stuff. It's a lot of charm. The, the ride's surprisingly good in this. Um, it's much better than the MG Medit that I drove. Of course, that's a very different car in terms of engineering. We've actually got um, half elliptic leaf springs at the back, but the the front I think is done with um, torsion bars and links. Probably for the late 1940s was very exotic. Nowadays that seems sort of prehistoric, but elements of the, of the suspension actually made it into the Morris Marina as well. Um, 
which is just extraordinary. Steering is relatively heavy. There's no power assistance, of course, or anything like that. But it's not, it's not too bad. It, it's okay. I just very much like the fact that, you know, with this upgraded engine that came in in 1962, got 48 horsepower, the minor thousand when it came out in 56 only had 37, that was a 948cc engine. You've got to watch the brakes though. You've got to watch these brakes. Um, what can I say about the brakes? The brakes are all drums seven inches at, I think it's eight and seven inches and they take a bit of getting used to I think I would say. Lloyd Vehicle Consulting stickers, t-shirts and mugs are available by clicking the link to the Google form in the video description below. One thing that strikes me immediately is how small this car is. Obviously, uh, by the time this car was made, the Mini had been in production for about 10 years, and so, you know, that was the smallest model that they had. But they had loads of other cars that are around this size. They had, up until recently, had the Austin A40. They had the uh, 1100 as well, and the 1300, which would have been out by the time this car was made. They seem to specialise in quite small cars, but just without getting into things like the um, Riley 1.5 and the Wolsey 1500, which were discontinued a little bit um, um, before this, this particular minor was made, but are sort of more luxurious and slightly larger versions with a different styling of this. Then you're getting into things like the uh, you know, MG Midget, which uh, actually shares the engine and gearbox with this. It's not exactly the same capacity, um, particularly by sort of 68, 69, um, when they were making the one that I drove on sensible second-hand classics uh, last year. Um, this is the 1100cc engine, the midget, uh, was actually um, a 1275 by this stage, but they're very similar. Um, particularly if you get the gear changes wrong, you know you're using the same gearbox, actually. They tidied up things, uh, like just the back end, um, in the sort of mid to late 50s really uh, and uh, you know this was the sort of ultimate final shape there are one or two other changes that happened between this and the end of production of the saloons in late 1970 um, and then some of the very last Morris Miners the last change I think was made was to fit an alternator which this doesn't have um, and uh, to fit uh, a uh, steering column lock which uh, this doesn't have either but yes, classic sort of pull-out door handle. This car's got a sort of original spec interior as well. Um, a lot of people fit different seats these days to them, uh, different gearboxes, different engines. Um, he is going to have a, a go at uh, treating some of this rust. That looks like many surface rust to me, to be honest. They're quite strong, these cars. Um, you can get, I think, still brand new panels in for these if you want. So... Uh, this is the dashboard that came in in October 1964. Uh, we've got things like a glove compartment lid on this side. There were two glove boxes, as you can see. Um, only the passenger one by this stage had a lid. The uh, fan is actually this thing here. And uh, the, <laughs> the, <laughs> the heater control is this. It's this one there. Um, that's for the direction of the air that you want. It's a very noisy, um, it's a very noisy heater fan in this car. Choke lever is just here. That is uh, for the windscreen washer. I think you can actually do this without the ignition on because it's just a sort of squeezy thing. There we go. That's uh, that's what you get. Yeah, excellent. If I put the ignition on, do does that mean I can use the 
wipers. There we go, the wipers. I think there's only one speed for those. Um, and that's all you get. No rev counter. Um, you don't get an engine temperature gauge. Um, I think you get a warning light somewhere. Um, you do get a fuel gauge and an ignition light, and you just turn that off there. Um, earlier miners didn't have a combined starter ignition switch. This is uh, the latest style of steering wheel. Some people do fit earlier minor steering wheels to these cars. This is the safer type. It's not at the uh, old free spot with metal in it, which is going to spear you in the event of an accident. So it's a little bit safer, but, uh, you know, there we go. Down there, we've got the, these pedals that come out of the floor. The only of the accelerator is actually pendant. Um, these two are not. They, um, they just come out of the floor. It takes a bit of getting used to, actually, something like that. Um, quite a few things in this car take a bit of getting used to. Quarter lights are, are there. The pull of the door is just this little leather tab. Which might, that might even be vinyl at this stage rather than leather. But this um, interior was, was uh, done in 2004. These are, I think, like inertia reel belts, but they don't necessarily feel like it. They are a little bit on the floppy side, but that's fine. We've got sun visors in here. They're very, very, very kind of sort of old-fashioned feeling that's not really a surprise I mean despite the fact this car was was made in the late 1960s this is a design that dates from the late 40s so it does feel very old-fashioned but they just kept making them um, they didn't sell in as big numbers as, as they did by this stage by 1968 only about 31,000 cars were sold um, but people just still absolutely love them and they still do this day. There are over 15,000 Morris Miners still registered uh, for use on the road in this country. Um, they are just the quintessential classic car, really. There's the um, Morris Miner Owners Club gear lever in this particular car. Um, yeah, similar gearbox to the um, MG Midget that I drove last year. Um, although this does feel like it's got a longer, longer lever, longer throw. Handbrake is there. Apparently that works okay. To get out, well, that's that's to lock the door. But to get out, you pull this like this. Um, window winder is there. Quarter light is just there if you want more ventilation. That the um, heater doesn't really do. The pressure ventilation is really these quarter lights. There aren't any vents um, on here. These are for the screen. Um, well, you can put it in the car setting just there, but I don't really know what that does other than of the screen. That's what they're principally there for. Um, yes, I suppose we can try getting in the back. Um, that could be interesting. Right, let's not just try not to rip to trip over the seat belt, which this side doesn't seem to be in a surreal. Um Don't know why. Right, let's let's get in. Um. Actually, there's enough room in the back of here, just about. Uh, there's not really anything to stop you kind of being thrown forward in the event of an accident. So, yeah, um, make sure you put your seatbelt on when you're driving. Or when you know, someone else is driving if you're a passenger. Um, yeah, we have actually got an inertia reel belt that side, um, which is better. I really don't like fixed seatbelts. <sighs> Um, yeah, I get a bit annoyed about things like that, viewers. But my um, grandfather's car did have an actual real seat belts fitted to it in the, um, I think the late 60s or early 70s. He got he got those, um, and it had had a sort of a, you know bits done to it, and uh, the roof was resprayed about 1978. So it wouldn't have been exactly the same as this. Uh, it's a 10 years older the car was. So. Um, it would have looked a little bit, a little bit different from this, but the same basic sort of idea um, is sort of here, and uh, would have been all there all the way through the uh, 23 years that this car was made, which uh, just baffles me really. Um, just you know, we don't we don't tend to make cars for that long anymore, um, and have them sell in such big numbers. You know, over 1.6 million of these were sold. Uh, but yeah, it's it's okay. It's not the biggest for adults um i can't remember how to you even adjust these seats or if they're just completely sort of fixed although i found the driving position of this actually okay um it's it's all right it's not um it's not it's it's not as awful as i thought it was going to be which is good again bits of rust is new tiling up in here um for a car that costs less than 
2,500 pounds. I think this is honestly pretty good. Um, obviously there's bits to bits to do to it, but it's just a lot of fun actually, one of these. And um, I understand why it's almost, my mother kept hers for as long as she did. She had it for 15 years and my grandfather before that, he had it about 10 years. There we go. So here is the uh, little 1.1 A-series engine, in this case developing 48 horsepower. See, there we go. It was actually restored and rebuilt at Brooklyn's College in 2004, this car. Still got a Morris Motors plaque there, despite the fact that we're right at the beginning of the British Leyland area with this one. I think that means it's got... Um, electronic ignition on this. Um, I could be wrong. These originally would have come with a dynamo rather than an alternator. Uh, no brake servo or anything in here. You can see that there's sort of holes in the floor from where originally this car was going to be fitted with a flat four engine. We did experiment with them. Um, I think capacities were something like 800 and 1100 cc's. But eventually the old side valve engine from the Morris 8 was fitted to the series MM cars which had once built before the middle of 1952. The grill um, started looking like this uh, with the Series 2 cars when they faced left in 1954. Uh, before that, they had a sort of more uh, complicated grill arrangement. This is the sort of simpler one. The flashing indicators actually only came in um, like this in about 1961. Before that, my mother's car, being a 58, actually has trafficators on it originally. I think they, they were sort of locked up and my grandfather had flashing indicators fitted, which is a, probably a good idea, to be honest. Even got an aerial. There is an aftermarket stereo, actually, in the, in the glove box, which, which I will show you. There's no point trying to get my secret mission documents in there, I don't think. I don't think they're going to fit at all. Um, yes, overriders, which um, you're going to need, because the bumper's probably a lot lower on, on this than a lot of other contemporary cars would have been. But, yeah, it's just very, very simple engineering. That's why people love them. You, a lot of the panels just bolt off, the doors, wings... You just, just bolt them off and change them if you want to. And, uh, you know, that's the way that's the way that it works. Um, and just very, very, very ki kind of um, over-engineered in some way. One of the reasons for discontinuation of the car was, uh, well, obviously we wanted something a bit more modern to sell to people that would appeal uh, when you're only selling, you know, 31,000 cars by sort of, uh, you know, 68, was the fact that this car was actually reasonably expensive to build. Um, it's not a separate chassis, it is a monocoque construction, uh, but it just cost a bit more to build, a bit more hands-on, a bit more labour-intensive than some of the other cars that were in production at the time, and so the profit margins were quite thin. Similar story to the Mini, which I think had even thinner profit margins on it than this. Uh, but yeah, I'll just show you that we've got the stereo in here, it's quite common for to put that in Morris Mindvega. My MiFi's in there too, must remember to take that out. Right, let's have a look in the boot, shall we? It's very clever. Both this bonnet and this boot are sort of cantilevered, so they just kind of stay up and then you just have to release them. It's quite well engineered in that way. The boot looks really weird because the spare wheel's meant to just sit um, in there. You can see where it fills in and the, the fuel tank's just under there. Um, but reasonably big boot. Of course, if you wanted more space, you could just buy by a traveller, which um, at some point I'm hoping to do a review of one, because uh, Subrano is actually restoring one, and he's going to be doing a very, very, um, you know, sort of good quality job of it, I think. Obviously, we've got patina on here, on all the chrome bits, and bumper. Again, if, if you want to, you know, get bumpers re-chromed, and bits of brightwood re-chromed, it's not a problem. If you want to buy new bits, it's not a problem, really, for these. Um, because there's so many of them around, and, and the... So the uh, enthusiasm behind Morris Miners is so strong. It's um, it's a really good car to just to learn bits on. I mean, a Beetle would be similar in that respect as well. They're both very, very kind of simply engineered cars, although quite different in their sort of ideology in terms of where the, en the engine, um, the engine and gearbox are and things like that. But yes, just uh, absolutely quintessential classic cars. Right, it's time for me to stop wittering on, and. Uh, Go for another drive, I think. Oh, 30 miles an hour. <laughs> 
So yeah, I've just got to remember when I come up to junctions and things, I don't really want to use first unless I'm in a complete stop. And we've got squeaky steering. So yeah, just a car that used dynamos until almost at the end. The car that didn't have a, a steering column lock until almost at the end. A car that just kind of outlived virtually everything else that was around and just kind of kept going. And you still see so many of these because they make salt loads, but also people love these. And I think I know having driven this. My mother loved her so much. It's still around actually, my mother's car. Um, it was sold to a friend of my father's in 1983, just after I was born. Um, obviously my, my twin sister and I arrived and having three children was really enough uh, sort of room in one of these. We, we, my parents had another car as well, they decided to sell both of them and just get a bigger car. And then it sat in that garage until about 2005, 2006, until another friend of my mother's bought that. And he, uh, he restored it. It had been painted, I think, about 78 in certain places. And then he did a lot of work on the engine and things like that. I don't know where the car is now, he sold it um, quite recently. If you look at the registration check for it, SVB578, it's not actually in the database anymore. It's just funny driving this car and you know this time where I don't know what happened to my mother's car. My grandfather passed away 32 years ago um, and the, obviously the Queen passed away yesterday. Just these warm glow of nostalgia is very very strong for me um, both with this car because I have seen I have seen my mother's one. I did see her um, a couple of times and um, that, but we love our icons in this country, our icons of culture, and the Queen will always be one of them, and this will be too. It's quite a journey. I do apologise for the uh, lighting, by the way, viewers. I don't know why it's. Um come out so dark. Uh, the Morris Minor, possibly the definition of a sensible second-hand classic. This car cost its owner, um, Andreas, three months ago, less than two and a half thousand pounds. Admittedly, it does need some work. Um, you would have seen that sort of earlier on in the video. But it's really, really charming. I understand why my mother kept her Minor until 1983, when my sister and I were born and we sort of got in the way of uh, other things that were fun so she had to uh, sell it and buy something a bit more sensible um, but these cars I think they probably get under your skin and the survival rate of them is surprisingly high they did make a lot of them but there are also a lot of them left and uh, the clubs are good the specialist uh, support is good parts availability is good the engines are generally very reliable you know, it's um, it's one of these things that is an icon of this country, not just a car, an icon of this country, an icon of the classic car scene. And uh, after many, many years of uh, waiting, I finally got to try one. So thank you for watching uh, this very nostalgic episode of Sensible Secondhand Classics. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like this video, leave a comment below, and uh, we will see you again soon for more reasonably priced in the cell. Yeah.